Hi, this is Glenn White with Eurosafety. In this module, we're going to be going over the electrical system for the AS350B3E. Now, people often shy away from the electrical system because over the years, I think for the most part, it's been taught to them in an overly complicated manner. So we're going to go through the electrical system uh, concentrating on things that will help us understand the system so that if anything were to occur in the, in the helicopter that we have a thorough knowledge of our system so that we conduct ourselves properly and make the right decisions. Now first of all when we're looking at the electrical system uh, there's the pilot's view of the electrical system in the cockpit itself. Uh, first of all, we have our caution uh, warning panel. And we have three electrical uh, lights that could be possible on the, uh, on the caution panel. Uh, the first one is the generator light. Now, when looking at lights, we need to know specifically what those lights mean. And I think that we've had a misunderstanding over the years what a lot of these lights indicate to us. For instance, the generator light. The generator light is not connected to the generator whatsoever. It has no idea what the generator is doing. It is a relay position indicator. It tells you whether the generator relay is open or closed. The battery light, same thing. The battery light is not connected to the battery whatsoever. It's a relay position indicator. So it tells you whether the battery relay is open or closed. If the light's on, the relay is open. Now this may seem like a uh, minor distinction, but it's important when we analyze failures within our helicopter. The last light is our battery temp light. The battery temp light would only be uh, in the helicopter uh, on the caution panel if you have a NICAD battery. If you have a lead acid battery, the light filament is either uh, removed where there's just two dashed lines there instead, or you have to have a placard indicating the battery temp system has been disabled. We have our switch panel. The switch paddle has a battery switch on it, and there's three positions to the switch. If we take the switch and put it in the on position, it will engage the electrical system. There is an emergency shed position. We have to bring back the guard in order to get there, and if we go down to the emergency shed position, it will turn off almost all the electrical items in the helicopter. We would utilize this switch position if we were to have an electrical fire in the, in the cockpit and we don't know where it's coming from, so we want to just shut off as, as much stuff as we can just having the basics to fly the helicopter. Next to the battery switch is your generator switch. And again, people have a misperception of what this switch actually does. Uh, first of all, obviously off, it's the relay is open. If you go to on, it tries to close the relay and the system will allow the relay to close as long as the um, generator is producing 0.5 volts more than is on the main distribution bus. That switch is not connected to the um, generator. It doesn't turn the generator on or off. It tries to open or close a relay. Now, this reset position, again, is often misunderstood. The reset position gets the generator to produce electricity by applying voltage to electromagnets within the generator. Uh, you often hear of it as referred to as flashing the field or exciting the generator. That just means that we're sending voltage to the generator. Now, if you remember from our NR indicator, we have our phonic wheel and phonic sensor. So remember when that tooth went by the magnet, the flux of the magnet increases. When a space went by, the flux decreased, it, decreased and when you do that rapidly, it produces voltage. Well, the uh, generator has electromagnets in it, so they're actually much more powerful than that small NR uh, sensor magnet is. And obviously you can make an electromagnet more powerful, more magnetism, if you apply more electricity to it. So when we go to the reset position, it sends a one second uh, jolt of electricity 
to the generator, uh, specifically the electromagnets in the generator. The generator starts producing voltage within that one second, and then within that one second, it can start feeding its own magnet. So it supplies the voltage to those magnets once it's producing voltage. So it just gives you a, a one second jolt. So once you go to reset, the generator is now working. And if you're in the off position, it's obviously not online. So when you go to on, it simply tries to close that relay. As long as that generator, again, is producing more volts than is on the main distribution bus, it'll allow that relay to close. On our VMD, we have that 